Hello everyone, I'm Yao Li from Chang'an University. In this lecture, we are going to learn some basic knowledge about one of the mostly used geotechnical tests, triaxial test. Quality of specimen preparation may affect the test results, so the specimen preparation is an important part in triaxial tests. Following figures show the steps of preparing an undisturbed clay specimen. Undisturbed specimen is an ideal specimen in geotechnical testing since it has an initial structure of particles with little disturbance. Its testing results can partially reflect the real behavior of soils. In the first figure, collected soil sample is trimmed to the required size in triaxial. Then the trimmed specimen is placed on the triaxial apparatus as shown in the second figure. In the first figure, the specimen is covered with rubber membrane and sealed. Then the triaxial cell is filled with water, as shown in the second figure. Filled water provides cell pressure around the specimen, and the additional load is applied on the specimen top where the load rod. Load rod is moved downwards to contact the specimen when the test is ready. The first figure shows the details of the triaxial testing apparatus. In the middle of the cell, we can see the sample. Above the sample, there is a porous disk and a top platen. Above the platen, we can see a thin rod, which is used to add additional vertical stress on a specimen. Below the specimen, there is a porous disk and the bottom platen. Water is filled in the cell and sample is surrounded by water. When there is water pressure in the cell, the specimen will have an all-around cell pressure. It should be noted the porous disks, top platen and bottom plate provide a drainage for the specimen, so the water can flow from the bottom to the top. The drainage condition can be controlled by controller and back valves shown in the second figure. There are few types of triaxial tests. They are classified according to their consolidation condition and the drainage condition during shear. In the first step of the triaxial test, cell pressure is applied. Samples can be consolidated when the drainage is open, when the sample is unconsolidated, when the drainage is closed. In the second step, Vertical load is added, which is also called divitoric stress. Additional stress can be added when the drainage is open or closed. In the first step of a triaxial test, there is a consolidation condition. If it is consolidated during consolidation stage, its drainage is open, water is expelled, volume is decreased, there is no excess pore water pressure if it is unconsolidated during consolidation stage. Its drainage is closed, water is maintained, volume is constant, excess pore water pressure is generated in the second step of a triaxial test. There is a drainage condition if it is drained. During shear stage, its drainage is open, water can be expelled or sucked in. Volume can be decreased or increased. There is no excess pore water pressure. If it is undrained during shear stage, its drainage is closed, water is maintained, volume is constant, excess pore water pressure is generated. As shown in the figure, according to the consolidation condition in the step 1 and the drainage condition in step 2, we have CD tests which is a consolidated drain triaxial test, CU test which is consolidated undrain test, and UU test which is unconsolidated drain test. Now let's have a look at the CD test. In the step 1, its drainage is open, so there is no excess pore water pressure. As a result, its effective stresses equal total stresses. In the step 2, its drainage is open, Although delta sigma, which is a divitoric stress, is applied, its effective stresses equal total stresses. The stress 
applied on the top of the specimen, which equals vertical consolidation stress plus davitoric stress is sigma 1. The applied horizontal stress, which equals the cell pressure, is called sigma 3. At failure, its effective stresses equal total stresses, and we have sigma 1 and sigma 3 at failure. This figure shows the volume change during consolidation of a CD test. It can be seen that the volume is decreased, and it is caused by the dissipation of water inside the sample. Those figures show typical results of a CD test for dense sand or over-consolidated clay with increasing axial strength, which is caused by the continuous movement of the load rod. Devitoric stress increases and then decreases to a constant value is reached. Its volume decreases first and then increases. The loose sand or normally consolidated clay with the increasing axial strain, devitoric stress continuously increases. Its volume continuously decreases. It should be noted the axial strain and the radial strain are the strain in one direction. Volume change is determined by the change of volume divided by total volume. The change of the volume is determined by the volume change of the water, since the solid has a fixed volume. Those figures present results from three individual triaxial tests with different cell pressures, indicated by sigma 3a, sigma 3b, and sigma 3c. In the top left figure, it can be seen that on the different cell pressures, the peak derivatoric stresses are different. In the bottom figure, three more circles are drawn using the three sets of data, mainly in the sigma 1 and a sigma 3 at failure, the Morse Coulomb failure envelope can be drawn, and the friction angle phi can be determined. Since there is no excess pore water pressure in a CD test, its effective stress equals total stress, so as to its effective cohesion and effective friction angle. So CD and phi D are used to note them. For non-cohesive materials such as sand and normally consolidated clay, the failure envelope passes zero, so only one CD triaxial test is needed to determine the failure envelope and friction angle. Generally, in CD triaxial tests, cell pressure is applied where drainage valve is open, and divitoric stress is applied slowly where drainage valve is open. Access Pore water pressure is zero at all the time. In CD triaxial tests, effective cohesion and effective friction angle can be measured from effective stress. More circles obtained from at least three identical samples. The CD triaxial test can be used in the evaluation of long-term steady seepage of embankment dams and evaluation of long-term stability of excavations or slopes in place. Here are all the contents in this lecture. Thanks for your listening and see you next time.